Kathy, can you believe Yangbo is going to do flip-flop, layout, step-in, immediate, back handspring, full twist, straddle down, roof over. I know it's amazing, Bart. And Brandy's going to go free straddle over, Kip cast handstand, giant swing half pirouette, front giant half pirouette, right into Takachev's straddle back handstand. That's unbelievable. Gymnastics, a weird language of its own. You got your basic straddle back to handstands, you got your triple fulls, you know, you got your full twisting back straddle down, a Brandy out. We might even see some front-on mounts, a couple of double backs, and even a few full-twisting your chankos. Confused? We'll explain later. Stay tuned. Join Donna Deverona for the World Cup Gymnastics Championships. This alluring site was once the scene of one of history's most gruesome battles. Now a monument is the most visual reminder of the Battle of Waterloo, when in 1815 Napoleon, in an effort to reclaim his throne, met his final defeat. Prussians, Brits, Belgians, the Dutch and the Germans combined forces and followed the brilliant military strategist, the Duke of Wellington, into a battle that put an end to the Napoleonic Wars, which had claimed over a million lives and ushered in 50 years of international peace in Europe, a peace many times since broken. Nearby in Brussels, Belgium, another monument built during the 1958 World's Fair is a reminder of our own times, of discovery, the Cold War, and of a changing, fragile Europe, where just a short time ago, East and West met best in a sporting arena. Today, gymnasts from all over the world will compete in the World Cup Gymnastics Championships. Hello, I'm Donna Deverona, and only the best from the strongest countries in gymnastics have been invited here, and those who have been chosen feel it's a special privilege. Joining us, Olympic gold medalist Bart Connor. Donna, the great thing about the event finals competition is that it's quite a bit different from the all-around and the team competitions where consistency is the big factor. The key today is difficulty. The judges require all the gymnasts to do a higher level of difficulty in the event finals. The gymnast who wins is the gymnast who goes for the big tricks, but they got to make them. You know, the Soviets have dominated the all-around and international competition, so this is the best opportunity for other countries to pick up medals. Here to discuss the individual event finals, Olympic medalist Kathy Johnson. What's really exciting here is either of the two Soviet gymnasts, Tatyana Lysenko or the reigning world champion Svetlana Boganskaya, could feasibly win all four event finals. Boganskaya did that not too long ago at the European Championships. And of course, there's Henrietta Onodi of Hungary, who has qualified in all four event finals and should have a shot at some medals. And for Brandy Johnson, this is a great opportunity. In a comeback effort, she's made three individual finals. Ironically, Brandy did not qualify in her best event, the vault, in which she won a silver medal at the World Championships in Stuttgart, and who I feel really had a shot at the gold here at this competition. But she's upgraded her difficulty. She has a great draw in balance beam and the uneven bars, so hopefully she'll be able to keep up with the field here. The women will compete on four apparatus, the vault, the uneven bars, the balance beam, and the floor exercise. Competition on the unevens is about to get underway, but Kathy, there was a big surprise on the vault. Yes, Donna, that possible Soviet sweep I spoke of came to an abrupt halt when the gymnast from Hungary, Henrietta Noti, took the gold on what has typically been her weakest event. She came up with two superb vaults and averaged 9.937 and took the gold. I really like this routine. It has a nice variety of skills and combinations. And even unique moves like this one coming up right here. It's very easy, but a nice little hop, full turn right to the high bar. Her first release move, it's called a ginger, with ample height, not quite as high as some of the other gymnasts do on their release moves. This is really the best part of her routine coming up here. Front giant swing, a full pirouette on the high bar, right to a dismount, tuck double back, excellent routine. Although Onodi is really quite well known for her pirouettes and her transitions on the uneven bars, like this move here, she has improved a great deal in her release move category. The judges require the gymnast's shoulders right there to be as high as the bar when they regrasp. You'll notice here on the second release move, she just barely accommodates what the judges are looking for. A solid routine. Her score a 9.9, .9, and you can see why she was third in the all-around earlier. But that score does leave the door open for the World Olympic and European champion from the Soviet Union, Svetlana Boganskaya, who earlier lost to her younger teammate, Tatania Lysenko, by just 
13 one thousandths of a point in the all-around. And right here is really the only mistake she had in the all-around competition, a big step on the dismount. And this was a difficult moment for Svetlana, who's been so dominant. And it was a sign that her younger, eager teammates are poised to take her place. Retirement is certainly on her mind. Of course, I'm thinking about it. I still want to train, but it becomes more difficult. So at this point, I'm undecided. And now up for the uneven, Svetlana Boganskaya. Kathy, it's got to be difficult to compete with any doubt in your mind. And unfortunately, Svetlana had a very negative experience at the Goodwill Games last summer where she actually fell from this event and not only cost her the all-around, but dropped her quite a bit. It was on that skill that she fell. There's her second release move. Nice work. What's most impressive about her is her impeccable form. Beautiful positions. Here's that dismount. Pike double back. It's where she had trouble. Looks like she had under-rotated it during the all-around competition, and she was making sure she wasn't going to under-rotate again, so she pulled it a little too far around and took a slight step back. What's so impressive about her is the long swings and the long lines, and at 5 feet 4, she's nearly a foot taller than many of her competitors. On the dismount, she's a little over-rotated and takes that shuffle step to try not to give away a major deduction. And the score to beat is a 9.9. .9. Her score, a 9.887, currently puts her in second place. Frank Gifford once again from New York. As we, we explained earlier, the Pro Bowlers were late start. We're back for the event finals at the World Cup Gymnastics Championships. Currently, Hungarian Henrietta Nodi is leading the competition on the unevens, but still to come, American Brandy Johnson. But first, a look at the unevens, an event that's inspired the most dramatic of innovations. I'm sure a lot of you remember this. <laughs> Remember when the gymnasts used to beat the bars? The event that's changed the most over the past decade in women's gymnastics is the uneven bars. The skills the girls are performing are much more difficult, and there are really three reasons for that. One, the gymnasts are a little bit smaller. Two, the bars are much smaller around and much more round, which helps the gymnasts hold on better and generate more speed in their swing to get the big swing elements. And three, and really this is the most important, the bars are much further apart now. I think we're going to have a little bit of fun here. We're now approaching my setting in 1984 where we did giant swings and release moves. Now we're getting to the average setting of the girls in the competition here. And you can see there's much more distance and they're doing big swing with big release moves. And this is Mirella Pashka from Romania, the European champion in this event. So far, the Romanians haven't had a good showing. She shows quite a bit of difficulty in this routine. Starts out with a full pirouette on the high bar to a beautiful high ganger way up above the bar. It's her second release move. Again, a reverse heck that's well above the bar. Something the judges are looking for. And a full twisting double back is now very difficult. Remember, the score to beat is a 9.9. .9. Pashka will get some bonus points from the judges for this combination here. There's a full pirouette on the top, right to her release move. Just a slight form break right there. But the extraordinary height and amplitude on those release moves and the difficulty in the dismount will really help her score big. And it certainly does. Her score of 9.912 moves Pashka into first. Ahead of Henrietta Nodi, this is China's Yang Bo. And the Chinese are really known for this event as well. They have such perfect form, straight body line, good toe point. She shows nice pirouetting moves. Look at the height on that Jaeger front, way up in the air. Nice front giant work. And a tuck double back dismount. Whoa! <laughs> One of the easier dismounts done, but she fought for the landing. Exceptional work throughout the routine. Beautiful pirouette moves, giant work. Look at the straight body here. And what's so impressive is not a lot of gymnasts have the composure to point their toes in the middle of a double back flip. Boy, she wanted to stick that landing. How frustrating in a sport where the landings are so important. It cost her. Her 9.887 will put her in a tie for third with Svetlana Boganskaya. Coming up.
the Derby Trial. Live. Up now, America's Brandy Johnson. And Kathy, this will be a new routine for Brandy. It's very impressive that she has added new skills to her routine because most athletes in this situation would try and play it safe and just do what they could do and do it well. She has a new combination within the routine. It's very exciting. It's right here, giant swing to a half pirouette, front giant, right into her release move, a reverse hect. Now she's trained a giant with a full twist for the end, right there before the dismount. A tuck double back dismount, great routine for Brandy. It's an event that has caused her troubles in the past, but not only was this a good routine for her, but a new one at that. A gutsy move for Brandy Johnson. On top of the new sequence early in the routine, Brandy even added this full turn here before the double back dismount, and she really snaps this double back. Very high, very well rotated. Brandy score a 9.862, which puts her in fifth place. Kathy, a little low? Well, she had some slight form deductions throughout the routine, and some of the other gymnasts are performing two release moves and more difficult dismounts. And this is Tatiana Lysenko. She's the current reigning World Cup all-around champion. And she has all the necessities to win this event. Two big release moves. There was her first one. Second one, even higher than the first release move. And most importantly, she has a very difficult dismount coming up right here. Double front with a half twist. Incredible. Such a difficult dismount. She does it so easily. Remember, the score to beat is 9.912. There's only a few people in the world that can actually do this dismount from a front giant. She's going to do two flips and a half twist. It's a lot of stuff to get done before the ground comes around. And Tatiana Lysenko's score of 9.937 gives her first place on the unevens. And she becomes the first Soviet gymnast to win an individual event final. So Lysenko wins gold. Romania captures its first medal of the competition and Brandy Johnson finishes sixth. We'll return later with more from the World Cup Gymnastics Championships. Frank Gifford and still to come, more women's gymnastics as well as live at Mark Sports and Science Converge, brought to you by at and We're in the heart of Europe where scenic locations like this call up images of a past full of tradition. Welcome back to the World Cup Gymnastics Championships in Brussels, Belgium. And so far, no one country has dominated. The Hungarians won the vault, the Soviets won the unevens. And earlier on the beam, it was China's Yang Bo. She was nearly perfect on this very difficult and unique routine. Remarkable extension and beautiful lines. Most impressively, great concentration. It's really nice to see the Chinese finally come through in competition. They are superb on this event, but in the past have faltered under pressure. Now we're ready for the final event, the floor exercise. And this is the current World Cup champion, Tatiana Lysenko. She's 15 years old, and here already, she upset her teammate, Svetlana Bogonskaya. So far, she's won the all-around and the unevens. Lysenko is very impressive on this event. She does a lot of difficulty in her tumbling passes. And she does them with ease and a radiant double front. Russian, very dramatic music. As I said, the routine is packed full of difficulty. Now watch how she changes direction out of this double back. Punch front and tumbles right back in the other direction. And the 
Soviets are known for really trying to push the difficulty levels out and ending with harder passes, full twisting double back. Well done. Tatiana Lysenko from the Soviet Union. The Soviets have such great technique, and perhaps as importantly, they're so finely conditioned that they can do these big moves at the end of the routine. Tatiana Lysenko establishes the score to be a 9.887. On the podium, America's Brandy Johnson. And this is really a contrast in styles. Their approach to choreography is very different. Whip back. Due to a full twisting double bat. Brandy is a very powerful tumbler. She has really had a terrific competition throughout the World Cup. Fifth in the all around, sixth on the uneven bars. Her middle pass is relatively new. A full twisting double bat. Oh no. Under rotates it and has to put her hands down. Choice of music, very upbeat, very American. The final tumbling run is a tuck double back somersault. She already has the one major deduction in the routine. And a nice finish. Too bad she had that one break because this whole competition has really been a positive for Brandy Johnson. You're right, Kathy. That was unfortunate because every gymnast tries to continue to upgrade their difficulty and their routines. On this full end, she's a little short, and the judges can take as much as a half a point off for that. And while she waits for her score, a comforting pat from her teammate Sandy Woolsey, who knows that Brandy Johnson's overall performance here at the World Cup has been one of America's best efforts ever. Her score reflects the judge's major deduction. Up next, Svetlana Boganskaya in her best event and a last effort to capture a gold during this World Cup competition. This is the final event in the individual competition. From Romania, this is 15-year-old Mirella Pashka, who's been able to perform at a high level despite conditions in her country, which have led to the decline of Romanian gymnastics. And she opens with a dynamite pass, full twisting double back in piked position. This routine is very true to the Romanian style, quick and energetic. For her middle pass, she does a whip back through to a tuck double back. It's a very nice transition musically. .887, which was established by Tatiana Lysenko. And things are really looking up for the Romanian gymnasts. They had a disastrous performance at the Goodwill Games, but their team is looking much stronger now. And her score, a 9.887, which moves her into a tie with Tatiana Lysenko for the lead. And now on the floor exercise in her final performance, sensational. Henrietta Anodia from Hungary, who's already won the vault and is capable of a great performance here. And she has really been an exciting gymnast to watch progress over the last few years. 
She's a terrific tumbler. And this is one of my favorite passes coming up. It's a triple twist and nobody does it better in the world. Hook at that. I really think she has been underrated in the past. A lot of people have been impressed with certain aspects of her gymnastics. She's certainly come together as a great all-around gymnast. This routine also takes a lot of endurance. That was actually a third pass. She does four very difficult tumbling passes. Pike double bat, perfect landing. Oh, that is a dynamite routine. Lots of difficulty in the tumbling and very crowd pleasing. And the score to beat is a 9.887. Her power is so deceiving. Look at the speed in this opening tumbling run. Good rotation. And look at the twist in this triple full. Very quick. Some gymnasts are flippers, some are twisters. She doesn't bowl. And the judges reward Anodi for her efforts with the highest score so far, a 9.937, which sets the stage for Boganskaya, who knows if she's going to win a gold here, she has to give the performance of her life. And she cannot compete with the tumbling that we just saw. But in terms of choreography and interpretation of the music, no one puts more emotion and drama in their routine. This is a complete performance. difficulty. Full and a half twist due to a double twist punch front. And she finishes with a tuck double back. Good landing. makes her able to stay competitive with those youngsters. A dramatic performance, but will it be good enough to beat Anodi's dynamic tumbling? The score to beat a 9.937. Morgan Skaya's tumbling is just adequate, but as you mentioned, Kathy, it's her complete presentation where she gets the big scores. Her score, a 9.962, which gives Bogan Skaya what she wanted, her first gold medal. Now being congratulated by her teammates for victory instead of defeat. So here are the standings in the floor exercise. Boganskaya takes first, Hungary's Henrietta Anodi takes second, and Romania's Mirella Pashka finishes in a tie with Tatiana Lysenko. All the individual event winners here prove something. Anodi won for Hungary's honor. Yang Bo demonstrated China's elegance. Lysenko did what was expected of a young Soviet gymnast. She won. And Boganskaya demonstrated what proud champions are made of. I'm Donna Deverona for Bart Connor and Kathy Johnson. Goodbye from Brussels, Belgium. The World Cup Gymnastics Championships were recorded back in October, and in January, you might recall, Brandy Johnson announced her retirement on Wide World of Sports in order to go on and compete as a professional.